Hello everyone and welcome. Bonds are formed in materials through the overlap of atomic orbitals. In this two-part set of videos, you will learn how the overlap produces different types of molecular orbitals, what factors affect the degree and type of overlap, and how the MO model can be used to understand bonds in covalent but also in ionic materials. The first video gives a short overview of the formation of bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals through in-phase overlap and out-of-phase overlap of the atomic orbitals. This produces MOs with energies that are lower and higher than the original AOs. The videos are aimed to providing a conceptual rather than a mathematical understanding of MO formation and they're provided at a level I think is appropriate for a sophomore taking an introductory class in material science and engineering. You can check the video description for other videos that give more details on atomic orbitals and a more mathematical description of MOs, as well as their extension to solids. I hope you enjoy these two videos. The bonding in materials intimately depends on the atomic electronic structure. And for that, we need to return to orbitals, specifically looking at how the orbitals on different atoms can overlap when they form a bond. The animation shows the orbitals on two atoms as they approach each other necessarily overlap, and they can do so in different ways, perhaps through in phase overlap of the atomic orbitals, or, as we will see, through the out-of-phase overlap of the orbitals. When atomic orbitals overlap, the resultant orbitals are called molecular orbitals. Atomic wave functions can overlap either constructively or destructively. Let us look at the overlap of p orbitals as an example. Here, I'm showing an energy level diagram, and on the left and the right are the two constituent atomic orbitals on the atoms that when we bring them together, or when they approach each other, these will overlap. So here's my two generic p-type orbitals on each atom, and if there is no overlap in this situation as shown, then the resultant energy is just the same. Now as the two atoms approach each other, we will see that their atomic orbitals will overlap, and as a result, through either constructive or destructive interference in that region of overlap, the molecular orbitals formed can be of lower energy, more stable, or of higher energy, less stable. In the formation of molecular orbitals, the number of orbitals is conserved, and so if two atomic orbitals come in and overlap, the result will be two molecular orbitals, but they are of different energies. Depending on the phase of the overlap in this region here, the resultant, as we call it, sigma overlap, sigma implying that the orbitals have overlapped, if you like, end on end, can either be destabilized or stabilized, depending on the phase of that overlap. Let's first look at in-phase overlap of two atomic orbitals. And the result will be what we call a bonding molecular orbital. So again, on the left and the right are my two p orbitals that I'm using in this example. And in addition to the boundary surface diagram, with the phases indicated, and in this case I've used both positive and negative signs to indicate the phase. Again, remember, this is phase, it is not charge. I've also used the color to designate those different phases, blue positive uh, and my reddish color negative. And here I have shown the actual wave function. So this is the P wave function, the 2P wave function, showing that in this region, the wave function has a positive amplitude. And on the other side of the nucleus, we have a negative amplitude. Now, as they approach each other, and in this case, I am just drawing the overlap of similar phases between the atoms, here I get constructive interference. The wave functions are overlapping in phase. 
the positive phase of this wave function is reinforcing the positive wave of this function between the two atoms. And that reinforcement gives me a resultant energy that is lower than that of the constituent atomic orbitals. And so here there is an increased probability density between the atoms, and that is the origin of the stabilized bonding molecular orbital, as we call it. Here I've redrawn the molecular orbital to show the result of the overlap, and we can note this large region of in-phase overlap. And because of this reinforcement of the phases, there is a higher probability of finding the electron between the two atoms than there was before, and that is a bond. Well, as I mentioned, when we overlap atomic orbitals to form MOs, we must conserve the number of orbitals. If two go in, two must come out. So while in the previous slide we showed formation of a bonding MO, we must also get the other consequence, which is the formation of what is called an anti-bonding MO. In this case, the two constituent atomic orbitals are going to overlap destructively. And so the positive phase of the p orbital on the left is going to overlap with the negative phase of the p orbital on the right. So again, we will bring these in. As they approach each other, I now get destructive interference in between the two atoms. So here the negative part of the wave function on the atom on the right is overlapping with the positive phase of the orbital on the left. This is destructive interference. The phases will cancel and as a result I'll end up with a higher energy molecular orbital. So this destructive interference, the cancellation of the atomic wave functions, decreases the probability density between the atoms and gives me this higher energy anti-bonding where the designation is typically a star, so this would be a sigma star, molecular orbital. And so now at the top I just highlight the appearance of this anti-phase overlap, showing how the two atomic orbitals destructively interfere with each other. And the end result is this. These outside parts have not been involved in the overlap whatsoever. But here's my two nuclei. I'm left with a little bit of positive phase on this region on the left, a little bit of negative phase for the orbital on the right, but in between them, where they overlap out of phase, I've got complete destructive interference. There is no amplitude of the wave function. There is no probability of finding the electron anywhere in this region. And so now this energy is higher than it was in the beginning for two reasons. I've lowered the probability density of finding any electrons between the two atoms, and I've also reduced the shielding of the charge of the two nuclei. These will repel each other and contribute to the destabilization of the energy of the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Here is a molecular orbital energy diagram highlighting the energetic effects of what we just described. On the left and right, we show the energies of the constituent atomic orbitals. Here I've shown these two orbitals being at the same energy. From what we know of Z effective, that means that these two atoms must be the same. They can overlap in phase to give me a bonding sigma orbital. The outer phase overlap leads to sigma star anti-bonding formation. I must form both so I conserve the number of orbitals. So here again is the wave function of the bonding showing the overlap and the result. At the top I show the overlap of the atomic orbitals that's causing the anti-bonding interaction and the result. And the energy separation between the two is called the sigma sigma star energy gap. The rules for the electron filling of the molecular orbitals are the same as we have seen before for atomic orbitals. So in this case, let's say we have in the constituent atomic orbitals one electron in each. Each MO can accommodate two electrons, and they will fill first the orbitals of the lower energy. In this case, both electrons end up in a sigma bonding orbital. 
The Sigma MO is the highest occupied MO, or the so-called HOMO, and the Sigma star is the lowest unoccupied MO, the LUMO level as it is called. And the energy gap is called the HMOLUMO gap. Here I show an animation of the overlap of these two p orbitals. At the bottom, they are forming a bonding MO because the overlap is in phase. And at the top, they are overlapping out of phase to form the anti bonding molecular orbital. Now we mentioned in passing that for atomic orbitals, the phases are dynamic. They change with time. This is also true with molecular orbitals, and that each MO goes through a full two-phase cycle with time. We don't need to concern ourselves with this too much, as this is the subject of a higher level, for example, graduate chemistry class. But I think it's important to see the behavior is dynamic and time-dependent. Next, we'll go on to look at the factors affecting orbital overlap, introduce non-bonding molecular orbitals, and using examples of HF and LIF, look at how MO theory can describe bonding in both covalent and ionic materials. All of that's in the second video, so make sure you watch it.